hydrate, hydrate. Okay, let's see. Jamam, no, Jamam, better, better. Okay, hi everybody. All right, who's here, who's here, who's here? Let me sit back. I know, you know, you kind of have to have some light on your eyes, but at the same time, I'm getting light in my glasses and I find it really annoying. Sorry about that. Are y'all here? I can't see anything. Let's see if I get rid of that. Nope. Sorry guys. I'm having, I'm technically, hi, TKD bar. I am a little technically challenged today and in the last couple of days. Um, hi, Terry. Hi, Max. Hi, everybody. I got a lot to say today. Carlos is here in WWE Motors and Furcha from Argentina. Oh, I love it. We should tango, baby. Seth is here and Sam Aracazo. I know I always say it uh, wrong. And Madiac, hi guys. Um, hello, June Bug and Super Blue and Mike Morse. I love this. I love this. Okay, I'm gonna get comfortable. Uh, okay, I feel like there is just such heavy duty light here. Let's lower this light. Can we lower the light? Can we do that? I wanna just kinda lower the light. I think that's a little better. Hi, hi Max, hi Brittany, hi everybody. Hey Sherlock277, yay, you're with me live. Oi, okay, so I'm gonna pop in here. Hey, Seth. Thank you, sir. I am doing well. <sighs> okay, so lots to talk about, man. Um, I have been on such... <laughs> I'm dressed like a spy. I love you so much. I love you. I'm going to try to put the frame right in the middle. I'm, I'm learning all my tech, guys. You're all just so amazing. And, uh, okay, Jaden. Oh, good, you got my April figure yesterday. That makes me happy. Okay, let's dive in. Um, hi, everybody. I just love seeing you all here. I can't even tell you. Um, so I've been thinking about this a lot. Like, I sometimes feel like I pop into these. I, I never, like, have notes or anything. It's always... Oh, you love my Playboy videos. Yeah, I've been doing this crazy little story on Instagram, which is Judith Hogue Official. And um, I have been having so much fun because I've been playing with filters and I am telling a story about when I was a little girl and I wanted to be a Playboy bunny. And it's many parts because you can only do it like 30 seconds. I'm sure you could do it longer, but I... I am so technologically challenged. It's just astonishing to me at times. And right now, my phone is just a, if there's kids around, I'm sorry, I'm gonna drop an F-bomb. No, I won't, I'll, I'll, I'll do different languages, even though I swear all the time. But it's just a mess of my phone. I don't know if I gotta get a new one, I've run out of storage, blah, 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 blah. Anyway, so I'm challenged, but I'm learning how to get better at that. Um, so I wanna tell you guys about a friend of mine and there's a reason. Well, let me back up a little bit. Who, and maybe just like, I'll read your comments a little bit, but who right now, hey, Jamie, I'm so glad you're here. I love it when you're here. Oh, Jamie is an amazing baker. Um, I, Yes, I know. It's, we have, I know there are people who definitely have uh, tech issues as well. Those of us who were not born with the internet, I, I, I think have a little more of a challenge. But anyway, let me, let me get, I want to take a little informal poll here. Who feels like they know what's going on? Like the future is clear, 
they know what's going to happen like they they're mastering this I, I i i they got their hands on life uh it's completely predictable uh anybody feel that way anybody feel like it's like they they yeah they got this yeah not me yeah, not even a little. Don't even know what's happening in 30 minutes. Sith Care Bear, I definitely don't know. Oh, okay, me on the most part. That's Sam Morocco. I never say your name right. Computer Tech, Matiak, I might need to talk to you. Not a damn clue. John Courtney, hi, guy. Um, so, not really. Yeah, Mike doesn't either. Like, so there's a point to this. Nope, not me, Junebug. I know, right? Aaron, not really. Uh, Alta at times. At times. It does come and go. It's true. Not really. Oh, I'm sorry, Super Blue. Oh, honey. Ah, yeah, you know, there is shit going on on planet Earth. So, that is... I believe the way life is supposed to go, that we don't know, that we don't know what's going to happen next. And, you know, the one thing I have come to rely on, the one thing that I know is absolutely predictable is that it's always going to change. Life is always going to change. It's just going to endlessly. Yes, John, I do agree with you. We, it is endlessly expanding and changing. And it is absolutely crazy ass is time, Aaron. You're absolutely right. And yet, I personally, within the culture that I grew up in and within the stories of the world that... I adopted, there was this belief that if you had it together, you could control the outcomes of everything. Like you were on top of this and that you had that, you got this, it, 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 that you could control life and that you could predict life. And I think if the last two years have shown us anything, it's that life is completely completely unpredictable and that it the one thing we can count on is that it's going to change and so the more that i find that i try to control outcomes the more it's as if life is showing me don't do that don't try to just ride the wave don't control the wave like you can't control the wave you can only ride it and so I find that sometimes, at times, I'm really good at that. And um, hello from from Vancouver, Canada. Hello, my friend. Um, I I am getting better and better at letting go. So I want to tell you about a friend of mine because he teaches me a lot. I have a friend, and his name is Bob. And I might have talked about Bob before. I love Bob. Bob is 92 and we met at a meditation retreat and I had one of the greatest laughs of my life with Bob and we have become friends and I learned so much from him. When I met him, I was astonished. I think he was 86 at the time that I met him and he's very tall. He has the most beautiful head of white hair. He has practically no lines on his face. And that man is like a light beam. And we fell madly in love with each other pretty much on the spot. And we have been friends since. And one of the things that Bob says is, and you've all heard it before, but it, okay. He says, all is well. He's known as Bob all is well. And the thing about Bob is when he says that, I feel it viscerally in my heart. I feel that, that soothing calmness of that statement because he embodies all is well. 
And he has 92 years of experience with all is well. And we had a really wonderful phone call this weekend because I was struggling this weekend and I was really feeling like I'm kind of at a crossroads in my life with what do I want to do next? I know that I want to make some changes in my life and I'm trying to figure out exactly how, where I'm creating some things. How do I do that? How do I bring all of my gifts and talents forward and and share them? Because I feel really compelled to share and be <clears throat> of service in any way that I possibly can. And sometimes it's like, well, I don't know exactly what that means or how I'm going to do that. And so I was talking to Bob and I said, how? I said, I conceptually, I know that all is well, but sometimes in my heart and in my body, it's just panicked or it's in fear or it's in flight or it's shut, kind of shut down or on low mode. And, and he said, I just practice it every day. And he's been practicing it since he was a young man and he's 92. And now it's become the foundation of who he is. And, you know, it really made me think about this a lot. It's like, he didn't just decide that all was well. He started to live all is well. He made the choice incrementally in the moment, day by day, that all is well. And then it became a belief and then it was baked into him. And then it became the foundation upon which he stands so that when the shit hits the fan, he just reflexively, just part of who he is, he just says, all is well. And his life commences from that place. He, is, he has made the choice to believe that. Now, Bob could just have easily has have made the choice to say all is not well. And he could have let everything that happened in his life that was not to his liking be the reaffirmation that all is not well. And he could have grown that into a belief which would then have been baked into him, which would then have been the foundation upon which he stands so that he would know for absolute certain and sure that all is not well. And then his life would proceed from that place. And that was, would have been his absolute choice to, to do that in every moment. Anything that happens, you just stack these things on top of each other. And it's like, all is not well. All is not, more evidence that all is not well. And it becomes my belief and it becomes my foundation. It becomes my mood and my attitude and how I relate in the world. And it's a choice. And so... I realize, oh, no, 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 I, I, I want to do, Bob is one of my mentors and role models. He's kicking ass at 92. That man is going to go into his hundreds and he's brilliant and he's well-spoken and he is well-read and he's always sending me books. And, and so I realized that it's every moment that something happens where I feel like I can't control this, I never saw this coming, the wild unknown of life. If I just pause for a second and take a breath and remind myself that all is well, then I'm growing a belief that when I say it, like just say it to yourself, like all is well. It just feels like a hug. But for me, it does. If you're not used to saying it, it might just feel like that's bullshit. But I've had some practice at it. And so it does feel reassuring. It feels soothing. When I say all is not well, I can feel a little bit of chaos and a little bit of panic already inside. I've been training myself to pay attention to how my body feels because that's a great indicator if I'm heading in the direction I want to be heading in or if I am heading in a direction that is maybe not so good for my well-being. And so it's something that I cultivate moment by moment. And 
what I've learned is that the unknown, which is what we live in, it's really like, I don't know what I'm going to say three sentences from now. I don't know what's going to happen when the live stream is over and I go out into the world to do things or I don't know, I'm doing my taxes right now. I don't know what I'm going to uncover there. I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. I don't know what's going to be in the news. I don't know what's going to happen next week. I don't know. All is well. All is well. Oh, I guess I don't have to worry about it. I don't have to control it. I don't have to figure it out in advance. I can just deal with it when it gets here because all is well. The other side of that that I'm learning is that when I when I adopt that belief and when I just fall into it, when I don't fight it, when I just say, okay, I'm going with this, I'm going with this. It's like the positive potential of that statement starts to draw things towards me that reflect my beliefs. I mean, because here's the thing. We live in this world with all these people. We're all connected to each other. We are. There's, we are. You cannot believe it, but hey, there was a, a virus that started on the other side of the planet, potentially from where you are right now, that circled the whole planet and changed everything. And maybe that was for the best, you know? We've talked about it before. I've told you guys about fucked up gifts, things that seem fucked up at the beginning, and then you realize a little while later that it's actually a gift. They happen all the time. So we can't control what's happening in this big soup that we're all in. We're all here together. We're sharing the earth together. We have wildly different, different preferences, beliefs, desires, uh, I, uh, goals, uh, likes, dislikes. And if I could just get you to jump on my bandwagon with me and I could control you, then it would be great for me. That's the definition of insanity. That's the de that is the actually the recipe for an incredibly unsatisfying, an incredibly unhappy life. It cannot be done. But what I can do is just do me. Just me. Just my little world over here and my all is well and see what happens from there. See what things, because that's a yes statement, not a no statement. It's a yes, yes, all is well. Versus, hi, Erin. Versus, uh, no, all is not well. That pushes things away from me. That, ooh, that makes my heart beat and my mind race. And it takes me out of the present moment because now I'm trying to control everything. Whereas all is well, I can just be here with what is and be kind of chill about it, or at least aiming in the direction of being chill with it. And I think that if I can just keep making friends with the unknown, Instead of fearing the unknown, welcoming the unknown. Like, there's incredible possibility in the unknown. How, don't you love it when something out of the blue happens? That's amazing. You never saw it coming. It's like you just won the lottery for yourself. I love it. It is my favorite thing. And so many of the things that happen that I love, I never saw them coming. I had no idea. And I love that. So that's the unknown. And other things have happened I never saw coming. And they're not awesome. And that is the unknown. 
But if I'm living on the foundation and I'm cultivating a belief of all is well, then I've got a much better shot at dealing with that stuff over there that I never saw coming that feels like it's going to break me and it shakes the ground that I walk on. And I can love this stuff over here that I never saw coming that's so awesome and I can just really appreciate and enjoy it. And just step by step, moment by moment, day by day, surf the waves that are my life, that is this experience of being alive on planet Earth now. It's just going to keep changing. It's changing faster than I think any of us have ever experienced before. And it's up to me individually and you individually to make a great life for ourselves. And I know for certain, if I'm making a great life for me, then I have something to offer and give to you. And if you're making a great life for you, then you've got something to offer other people, whether it's your beloved, your family, your children, your friends, your colleagues, your your town, your state, your country. And if I have the belief that all is well, if I'm cultivating that for myself, then the things that show up in the world that are scary, I'm less afraid of them. I have a thing that I do and I call it, I hold my own hand. I hold my own hand. I reassure myself. And the fastest way that I am learning to feel a really true sense of calm is when I stop and I breathe. There is nothing like a deep breath to make you feel better. It is a cocktail for your mind, your body, and your spirit. And I love a good cocktail. And that's one you could have first thing in the morning. <laughs> Get drunk on yourself. <laughs> Sometimes you take the first breath and you're like, yeah, it didn't really do it to me. Take that second breath and you're like, hmm, take that third breath. Long and slow. Hold it just for a second at the top. Get all that air out. Personally, I find that by that third breath, I'm feeling better. And when I can take a moment to pause, particularly when I'm about to flip out, in the pause, I get to kind of regroup. And before I spin out and say something I'm going to regret or behave in a way that is not in alignment with my heart or lash out, because at you, because I'm in pain, or I'm stressed out, or now suddenly I'm angry because you press my button, I give myself a moment of breath to make a choice that's in support of all is well. Have you ever read the book Uh, okay, so somebody is saying that they find that when they breathe, they hyperventilate. So I'm going to give you a little tool for anybody who's breathing too deep, you know, and fast. 
You don't want to breathe fast because now you're creating a stress reaction in your body. You want it to be a really slow breath and a great way to get a good slow breath is just breathe out first so that everything is out and then slowly through your nose filling up your belly with air moving it up your body to your full take a second and then slowly breathe it all out and do it slower so that you don't hyperventilate a kundalini breath there are some kundalini breaths that are done to make you get sort of a um a lightheadedness, a lot of oxygen to the brain. When you're feeling stressed, that's not generally the breath that you wanna take. There's a lot of different breathing techniques. That's one that I find that when I wake up and I'm feeling stress, like right out of the box, I just go into a breath, several breaths, and I Somebody said they got a CPAP machine and that works great for them as well. That's great, which also helps with your sleep apnea. Yeah, you wanna clear your mind and you wanna take that breath. I always breathe in and remind myself that I'm fine and that there's nothing wrong here. We're just waking up. It might be the leftovers from a dream. It might be just some tension that's trying to get out of our bodies. Remember, we store all of these experiences and all of this stress and tension and thoughts, you know, the crazy thoughts, they get stored in our body. And so sometimes when we're feeling pain or anxiety or stuff, or, you know, things in our body that we don't understand, like where all of a sudden did that panic come from? It might be that something's trying to get out of your body. Something's ready to be released and let go of. How awesome is that? What if it's not panic at all? It's an old energy that's finally like ready to go. And so if I just let go in the moment, knowing that all is well, then I get to release that. I've been finding that I've been releasing all kinds of old shit. And now sometimes it comes up as like, why am I thinking about this again? And sometimes you're thinking about it again because it's time to let it go. You're ready to let it go. Or maybe you've got a few more circles of the drain to do on it. I believe that everything is here for me, in favor of me, and never against me. Also something that I work diligently to bake into myself because I've lived alongside of people who don't have that belief. I have somebody so close to me who does not have that belief and watching them get older and sadder and more closed down is one of the heartbreaks of my life. But I love them where they are and I will love them until their last breath exactly the way that they are because that I can give I can hold the light for them when they can't hold it for themselves and maybe that's why we do this work hmm on ourselves so that we can throw lifelines to each other when we're sinking and we all take our turns sinking and we all take our turns being the light and so that's what i got this week and i love you guys and i agree reiki is fantastic oh god you guys i'm gonna go back and read all of your comments because it is so brilliant you are such a brilliant dynamic powerful group of people and i am honored that you would come here and hang out with me and i hope you all make friends with each other 
because you are an awesome, awesome group. And I love you so much. I don't know that I'm going to see you next week. I've got a big week next week. And then, hey, I'm going to be in Lafayette, Louisiana next week at a Comic-Con. I'm going to, I'll post it here. It'll be posted in my Instagram. And I know I got to start posting in Facebook and all that kind of stuff. I've got all kinds of things coming up. I'm building a website where we're going to be able to connect with each other um, more and uh, where you can also find out what I'm up to and because uh, I'm going to be doing all kinds of different things. I'm just, I just have so many interests and so many things that I love. But anyway, I'm going to let you go. I love you so very, very much. And uh, I imagine... Well, you know what? That's why it's kind of a good idea. If you feel like it, this is not a pitch to make you do it. I promise. If you do subscribe, you will find out when I get a wild hair and I'm going to show up back here. Like I didn't even post it on Instagram today or I, I, I was pretty sure. I did post here yesterday to let you guys know that I was going to be here today. So if you want to get alerts and all that kind of stuff, feel free if you don't. It'll find you if it's what you need. And I love you guys so much. And I will talk to you very, very soon.